pastry, hand sanitizer. <laughs> is that beyond? It is. Yeah. See? It's like seeing a Sasquatch. <laughs> <laughs> You can just tell we finished a year and a half project. Stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. This is the Porter County Board of Commissioners meeting, Tuesday, July 14th. It's just a little after 10 o'clock. We're going to move right into consent agenda. Uh, we'll have Melanie uh, give us the lowdown on that. Approval of payroll, June 12th, June 26th, July 10th, 2020. Approval of claims, June 10th, June 17th, June 25th, July 2nd, and July 9th, 2020. Approval of minutes, June 9th, 2020. Waste and measures monthly report files, May 16th to June 15th, 2020. Thank you. Uh, then we have artistic services agreement. Uh, Commissioner Blaney? Uh, we've got MD MTI production contract for Little Shop of Horrors, the Broadway version for 2021. Bam Theater, a collaborative operating agreement. And Concord Theatricals for Holiday Inn. Okay, that's the consent agenda. I'll throw it to the floor. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and second on consent agenda. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We're getting into announcements now. I'll let Commissioner Blaney start with hers, and then I got a couple to follow up with. Good morning. Yeah. We're Scott. Scott, do you want to tell us a little bit about the grants you got for Memorial Opera House? Come on Please. forward here, yeah. Scott. Yeah. And, uh, spot, great real great. briefly, we just want to... We just want to spread the good cheer. <laughs> Morning. Morning. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so we have received about $46,000 worth of grants in the last month, uh, $20,000 from the John W. Anderson Foundation, which uh, will be going towards Memorial Opera House Foundation and some projects that they're working on, two from Indiana Arts Commission, actually three from Indiana Arts Commission, um, one is a $3,000 grant from the CARES Act that is being administered through the NEA, Arts Midwest, and IAC. We have to spend that by the end of the year. Um, another is for project support, so we can continue things like the line lights going and all of that. And then another one is for operational support that we will also be utilizing to keep all things moving forward as we go. So, so I don't know if everyone realizes, but the... Uh Memorial Opera House is a self-funded budget, so having to shut the doors has right. presented some significant challenges this year. Yes. <laughs> so to bring in $46,000, over $46,000 worth of grants in one month is outstanding. Thank you. It goes a long way to making sure we Thank get you. those doors back yeah. open again. Thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. Scott, Scott while you're here, yes. uh, Attorney McClure said we'll just take care of your business, okay. so we're going to move. We're going to move to the third page here in the Memorial Opera House. We have a request for an additional appropriation fund, 83 in the amount of $9,335.04, to account 3950 contractual for funding received for FY20 for years 2021 to be used for operations. We'll be working, we'll be working it into a budget for 2021. Yes. And do we do these separate staff? We can do them together. And then we have another request for additional appropriation A300 in the amount of 3000 to account 3991 services for emergency funds received from IAC with funding from CARES Act. Mm -hmm. So these are before us now, uh, looking for uh, the board to take action. Do we need to have a hearing? Mm -hmm. nope. A motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. 
Motion carries. Great. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Scott. Thanks, Thanks for all everybody. your hard work up there. Thank you. Okay, the next announcement that I have, first of all, I wanted to announce that our stormwater department's uh, website has just been uh, launched. Uh, it does, it does uh, connect to the county's new website as well, too, uh, but for uh, letting people know out there that the new stormwater uh, board website is up. It's very user-friendly. Uh, uh, we think it's going to be a, a good uh, access for information from the county, for developers, for homeowners, for landowners, uh, for everybody. So we're just trying to make it easier to uh, sort of get through the landscape of Porter County government and how we're setting up and there's more and more information uh, being downloaded every day. So uh, look more for better things to come out of our new website. The other thing what we did this morning in our stormwater board meeting at 9 o'clock uh, was we wanted to discuss, uh, we wanted to take a moment to announce a contract that we let this morning uh, to Christopher Burke and Associations regarding a Shorewood Forest. Uh, Mike Novotny, why don't you come forward and I had Mike stay just briefly, the county engineer, Mike Novotny, to sort of give a little bit of an update of what the county is going to be undertaking uh, in the future at Shorewood Forest because this is, this is significant. Uh, Mike? Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, as, as, as Jeff mentioned, uh, this morning the Stormwater Management Board uh, voted to uh, allow us to enter negotiations on scope and fee with Christopher Burke Engineering on a stormwater master plan for Shorewood Forest. Uh, you guys are probably all aware of all the work that we've got going on in Old South Haven right now. Uh, the basis for all of that work was a stormwater master plan. It gave us concepts, identified all the problems, gave us concepts and alternatives for solving those problems, and that's what we've then developed to get all the work done that we're, we're doing up there right now. So this master plan that we're going to be putting together with Christopher Burke and Shorewood will be the exact same kind of roadmap for future capital improvements in Shorewood. Uh, we already know there's a lot of issues out there, uh, ravine erosion, um, sedimentation into uh, the lake, as well as deteriorating and aging stormwater infrastructure, corrugated metal pipes that are rusting away and, and need to be re replaced. So we've been doing sort of addressing urgent issues as they've come up, but this will again give us a framework to handle all the problems out there in a cost-efficient and time-efficient way. So packaging things together, doing things at one time. Uh, and then part of our process will be engaging, a big part of our pro process will be engaging the public in everything that we're doing. Residents hearing about their problems, their concerns with what we might be doing, um, collecting their input on potential solutions to address, for example, issues within the ravines themselves. So uh, we're really looking forward to getting this underway. It'll be a great vehicle for us and a sort of uh, a next step in handling another large subdivision in, in Porter County that, that needs stormwater help. And I think the reason why we wanted, I wanted Mike to come in here and talk about this today is that this is not only just from a work and an engineering standpoint, uh, this subdivision, uh, the history of Shorewood is rather interesting. When it was originally built, it was supposed to be a private development. And at some point in time, I don't know when it happened, but the county decided to go in and take over some stormwater and roads. And uh, the entire subdivision is developed with easements that really don't give the government access. So we get a lot of calls out there to fix things, but we don't have the legal right to go on these people's property to enter in to fix a lot of these problems. And not so, everyone wants to cooperate. And not everybody wants to cooperate. So you could have a, a lane that affects four houses, but the house in the middle doesn't want to give consent for us to get on their property, then you really can't do the fix. So um, not only is this going, that's why the public outreach and, and education is going to be uh, important because the history of this development has a lot to do with the situation that we're right. in today. Right. And the engineering piece is, is solvable, right? But getting the legal access to get in and be able to work in this area, that is going to be uh, the labor of love that we're going to be uh, having to perform out there to, to get this done. So uh, we just felt that it was uh, 
it's time for this, uh, but I also want to let folks know that we do have some headwinds here, but I think if we message this properly and let people know what's going on, I think we'll, I think everyone will get on board, but it's, it's up to us to make sure that we're sending the correct message and why we're doing this and why we need everybody's help. And uh, I, I, can, I can also say this, uh, I would rather have no one on my side going into a project like this than Mike Novotny and our stormwater department because they've proven up in South Haven that we can do this. And we're going to do it at a high level, uh, but this, this is another big juggernaut that we're, we're taking on. So thank you, Mike, for staying. I know you're busy sure. and giving us a little bit of an update, but that's our announcement on Shorewood. So be looking for positive things happening out there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to get into uh, some appointments that we have here. We have the Porter County Public Library System has a board opening. Uh, we had uh, both these uh, board uh, opening positions were advertised, and uh, we, we had uh, applications and uh, we're going to uh, fill those positions now. I would also like to sort of, while we're on this, we made an appointment to the Gary Chicago Airport Board during COVID on one of our Zoom meetings, but I'd like to sort of announce that too, that Wes Curtis uh, has been appointed by the Porter County Board of Commissioners to sit on the Gary Chicago Airport Board. So that was done several months ago, but it really didn't get much of a splash out there, so we're going to let, uh, let Wes know that uh, we've announced that here in a public meeting. So with that, we're going to go fill these two positions now. The Porter County Public Library System, and I'll open it to the board to uh, put those nominations forward. I'd like to nominate Christy Merritt to the Porter County Public Library System. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next one is the Porter County Airport Board Authority. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to nominate Chesterton resident Thomas Kopko. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have Scott Cherry, Derek Anderson um, from Stillman Corporation. Uh, as most of you, all of you know in this room, the county over close to two years ago set out on a capital improvement project uh, where we uh, did a lot of work on a lot of the county's facilities over the last two years, and I think everybody here is aware of what we've been doing, and I'm sure there's probably departments in here that have been affected by it as well, too. Um, what today, we have them coming in front of us to give us an update. All the final numbers are in. Uh, we uh, had a lot of dip dodges and weaves along the way, um, but what we're, we've asked Gilman to come forward today to give us an, uh, a final update on where we ended up on this project and uh, let the public know how we ended up. So with that, I'll turn this over to Scott Cherry and Derek Anderson. Thank Welcome, you. gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Gary. Uh, as you know, it's a pleasure to be here to give you this update and basically a summary of where we are or where we started and where we, where we are now. Quick introduction about the program. Back in 2017, I got a call to come in and talk to you. And we were thinking about a $30 million program with some facilities throughout Porter County to be improved. Um, we sat down and one of the exhibits I gave you on October 11th, uh, 2017, and at that time, we were thinking uh, that maybe the program would be $27,500,000 and would include work at this building here, uh, including a 911 possibly on this property or somewhere else, uh, the Expo Center, the current courthouse, and of course the North Annex over in Portage. Um, ultimately, we came up with a budget of uh, 20, $26,400,000, and that was in December. And the way we arrived at that was uh, systematically working through a process, bidding some of the projects early that we knew we can take care of quick, such as window replacements and things at the courthouse. And we're able to do some uh, evaluating of the facilities and establish that $26,400,000. So the team, I, I, I think it's 
important to recognize the teamwork that made this project a success. Obviously, with uh, Laura and Jeff, uh, commissioners uh, working closely, with Scott McClure and our, our team, Derek Anderson, Dion, and myself. Through the process, we hired Shai Hatterley, um, local architect, architects uh, who used Millie's Engineering, and of course, uh, American Structure Point over at the Annex Building. Uh, just looking at how we established this program, the sequence of events after we hired the team uh, and got everybody on board, we looked at a strategy on how to control and manage this budget. We had 26400000 We had a lot of needs. And how do we creep up into that, that point? So I have a program schedule kind of outlines how we did these projects and the sequence we did purposely to be able to get sort of the answers to the test, if you will, uh, by bidding projects, getting, uh, seeing where the bid results came in, and taking money that saved on one or the other and shifting it over constantly to address needs, and even tap into contingencies and possibly do more than we bargained for at some of these schools, still keeping our eye on that $26,400,000 uh, budget that we, we always established. So with that, you can see that we started the work in, in May of 2018, and we're going to wrap up here in uh, 2020 at the North, Ax uh, the North Annex in August here. We should be complete. So that's how we arrived at the budget, and then where are we today? So if you take a look, I've got a program budget that I uh, sent out, and it's probably 99% complete with costs. And you can see where we were at. Um, throughout the process, there was a, some additional money that was picked up through different uh, sources. So the budget was reestablished at $26,454,000. And today, I'm sorry, the funds were $26,445,000. And today, we sit at $26,454,000. And that includes some change orders that are pending over at the North Annex um, right now that we believe could be covered. And there's potential to make up that $9,000 difference on how those changes come in or other sources. Uh, one of the things that we were able to do is maximize all the savings out of the contingency and, and do things that were necessary uh, that we had the opportunity to do, for example, at the Porter County Expo Center uh, we ended up increasing the scope of that work, doing a little more work in the ex ex exhibition hall, and at the same time going ahead and uh, doing some electrical work that just absolutely had to be done. Same at the North Annex. We run into some bad soils. Um, sometimes that can break a budget, but we manage it through contingencies and, and constantly working together with the Structure Point team and the Skillman team and, and you, the commissioners. So, I think it's a, a model of how it should be done. It's teamwork and constant communication. So at the end of the day, when you start a project and a dream in 2017, and here we are in 2020, and we're looking at about a $10,000 over, um, I think that's a pretty good way of uh, putting as much into that paper bag without it exploding. And we've addressed a lot of needs. So I think at the end of the day, what I, what I can say is that there's been a lot of... Um, economic and community impact from these projects. Uh, the Expo Center obviously is uh, a gem, if you will, a lot, of, uh, a lot more opportunities to, to get revenue from there. The courthouse, when you look at the, the long-term issues that you addressed throughout this program, uh, it's going to minimize your improvements down the road, some of those costs. We took care of the major things, but in other buildings, you're, you're going to run into some, some issues. Uh, you look at the uh, 157 Franklin where the 911 facility was put in there along with some additional space. You still have some space there for expansion. Um, and because of that building and that property, we were able to open up some space over here, I believe, and even at the courthouse. So it was a good economic way of addressing that. Um, and then you lower your operating costs, obviously, by some of these updates and getting more efficient equipment and things like that. And if I can, just throw in a couple of statistics. Um, you know, the public works, it's always, we're always commissioned with try to keep it local. And local usually means Porter County, Lake County, 
or Northwest Indiana. Indiana uh, is where it, kind of our priorities. We try to get as many residents involved in the program as we can. So throughout these projects, these uh, six bids that we received, we had 110 bids. So that means uh, 110 local contractors uh, did, gave us bids for the work. We had uh, 34 prime contracts, that's contractors. Uh, 33 of them were from Porter or Lake County, Indiana. The one that was not was from South Bend. So that's still a pretty good statistic. So that means that Porter County contractors who typically, and, and Lake County who typically employ Porter County residents were involved in this project. There's 100% union contractors and workers. Uh, so I gave uh, also on my sheet a couple of the, the jobs that were created between 115 and 135 jobs were created throughout this process. Possibly more, I took the, the mean, if you will, of all the projects combined. A lot of ancillary businesses were affected by this. All the general condition type works were local contractors for fencing, toilets, temporary toilets, uh, facilities, and, and those types of things. So I think overall uh, the impact and the outcome uh, is very good. Hopefully um, you're happy with the work that was done and uh, be happy to answer any questions you may have. Yeah, I think um, as most people know, most of the, these buildings that we tore into were existing facilities. Um, and uh, from a budgeting perspective and everything, it's always much harder to do remodels than it is new because uh, you always get a few aha moments and we definitely had our share. Um, just to put it into perspective of the 26.4, I mean, what was our total, some of our bigger change orders that we got into that were big, big, I know the Expo one was like 450 right off the bat, and that was the first project we started, so it was like, that was the first one we started, and we're like, oh no, um, but go ahead, I mean, because we did, and we, we were able to deliver this pretty much at budget with some Big surprises. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we made like at the North County project, we spent about two hundred and fifty to three hundred thousand on unsuitable soils, which you don't really know until you get into it. Um, and then some of the um, environmental items we had to deal with that really weren't aware of. Once you open up walls, you see them. Um, so there was another probably sixty to seventy thousand dollars spent on environmental work that we didn't really anticipate. Um, so yeah, there was there was some big hits out there. That was almost like what a hundred uh, a million million forty seven was our total in contingency. Right, and I, and I think one of the compelling things, if you look at the twenty eighteen budget, where we had nineteen million three hundred fifty thousand was construction cost budget, with including the contingency. And today we're looking at nineteen seven sixty two. Um, and we were able to absorb all those hits that you mentioned. That's how you manage the contingency, and that's how the process worked. Uh, these were changes that weren't, we need your approval to move forward because we had to do it. Yeah. It was more we need your approval to manage the process and control the costs and, and, and work with it, and that's what we did. And I think the, the, the poor soils that we ran into in Portage, I think the end product, is we have a beautiful pond in the back of that development now that we were even talking eventually you could put some type of walking park or seating area back around there um you know when people are in court or whatever it's a beautiful area in the back there so we took something and, and turned it into something that's very uh, functional uh and we shouldn't have any more uh, stormwater issues up there um, and uh, turned it into something that's going to be there for a long time. This also budget includes half of our cost of the trustee building that we're sharing with uh, Portage Township. So <coughs> these costs reflect our share of that. And then they've been paying their share of the bills along the way as we've done draws and things. And, and I, I would say that uh, that went pretty well too with Portage Township, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of cooperation and, and things there and we think we have our half of a building, we think we really have a neat neat area there uh, with the food bank and the Portage Township Assessor, the health department, I mean we, it's going to be a nice 
keeping all those folks out of the courthouse. We're being able to lock that down now, make it a high security facility. And then the people that just want to come in and get immunizations and other things, they can go in there and they don't have to get go through the metal detector and uh, well, make it a little more. Well, started this. The, yeah. The uh, people who are waiting in their orange suits to go into the courtroom were sitting in the hallway, the same hallway where children were waiting to get their immunizations. <laughs> so some of these improvements <laughs> are just huge. <laughs> overdue. Yeah, long yeah. overdue. Yeah, overdue. So, um, but yeah, I just wanted to, to point that out. Um, I, I can, uh, from, from my perspective, uh, being in this industry for a long time, uh, it was a very, it was a pleasure working with you guys. I, I, I you know, to, to take on something, this, to me, it was a big project for some part-time folks up here and whatever. Um, you, you guys were just great to work with and uh, uh, made it, made it easy for us to make decisions and do things and Derek and and uh, Dion, thank you. Um, you guys did a great job and your staff there too. So I wanted to thank you too because you did make it very pleasurable to get stuff done. Thank you. Appreciate it. We feel the same way. And, and we'll be finishing up. There'll be some punch list yep. items, some move in pains, but for a phone call away, and us three aren't going anywhere that I know of. <laughs> and just so everybody knows, I know everybody's probably thinking, well, you had a $30 million bond. Why is it 26 whatever? And Scott, I mean, we had two bridges in there, too. Yeah. Well, we had a we had $30 million bond around 1.1 1 .1 or 1 1.2 and bond-related costs as far as bond council and first payment of the bond. And so then uh, we did 26 for the bridges had about 2.5 and the bridges had the bridge part of it had the extra 45,202. So that's, came what in took, under. so that's what took our number to from 264 to 264452 uh, at this point. So any other questions from the board? So basically in the end we came in about $9,300 over budget on a 268 or 6 uh, 264 uh, budget and we're I mean, I don't like to be over on anything, but 93, I'll, I'll take this one. <laughs> I'll take this as a win um, based on, you know, and to me, the $9,300 being over, to me, it's worth every penny driving by that courthouse and looking at it every day in downtown Balco. I'm sorry. I just, I, I am just tickled to death how that turned out, and I really believe that it's a true reflection on what this county is really all about and who we are, and uh, it, it, it's standing grand now. We're, we're, we're tickled to death, and I know I, my, myself personally am very proud uh, to be able to be a part of that uh, next phase in the history of that building, which now has a very long runway. So uh, it's, all, it's all good from that perspective. So, and, and real quick, yep. as we've gone through all of these, it's, was inconvenient for many of our employees because, we, because they were still working in the building. And we had very few um, <coughs> complaints and belly aching. Everybody really got on board and, and helped us do what we needed to do to, to make this happen. So we appreciate that as well. Yep. So one last thing, uh, just to give everybody a timeline, uh, I think later uh, in this meeting, we're going to be addressing some office furniture needs uh, for the 157 building. Uh, we also have some 911 items that we're going to be completing on the next 30 days. But uh, over the next 30 to 60 days, you will start seeing the county transition into that new building, and we'll start moving in. Uh, and our buildings facilities department is all on hand, and. Uh, they know about it, and we're even talking about moving Ray's department over to the basement over there. There's been some discussion of that. Uh, so we're now that we got stuff to move into and we get some furniture here, uh, we're a little bit behind on the furniture, but that was a COVID thing. Um, but we'll get caught right back up, but uh, this is the last step. So thank you again, gentlemen. And uh, Thank you. Uh, we're, we're off and rolling, and uh, I think we can put this one in the books that it was successful, and now we move on to the to what's next. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. No. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, here we go. Pulse technology.
furniture bids. Um, Pulse Technology in Chesterton was the lowest and most responsive bid for the furniture. The furniture was the original, ar the architect for the building was uh, Ty Hattery. They then, we then contracted with them to get the specs for the furniture that are going into the offices. Uh, and the bulk of the office space that we're dealing with is on the third and fourth, excuse me, the second and third floor. Uh, that's where the probation department, belt probation, and the prosecutor's office will go. Both of them have, um, are in, currently in the Valparaiso courthouse with um, very, very old furniture that some of the prosecutor's office right now is hand me down from the 4D office. And we obviously have the other issue of uh, significantly different size uh, offices and things like that. So the furniture um, for those floors are, are pretty significant, but also uh, pretty necessary for the move and for the building to work as pointed. But we uh, did open the bid, um, I think right before COVID. Um, and uh, false technology from Chesterton was the lowest and most responsive. And so um, I would ask that the commissioners uh, consider uh, accepting the false technology uh, bid. Um, and then we could talk about the first order. Uh, motion to approve. We have a motion and a second for false technology uh, for accepting furniture bids. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. We have a. Uh, we have spent some time going through the bid and um, pulling out things. Uh, Pulse is also very cooperative in assisting and getting it broke down by floor, um, pursuant to what was designed out. Going through that, the total original bid was $242,097.97, and that's just furniture. That's not labor or, or setup or delivery. The $175,000 would be would put us in a position to be able to purchase all of the desks for the employees on the second, third, and fourth floor. It would allow all of the employees' chairs for their desks. The two waiting are the two. Uh, um, appointment chairs within those, um, all the conference room tables, the conference room chairs, um, and to round that out, this order would not contain file cabinets or waiting room chairs or, uh, or waiting room end tables or break room chairs or break room tables. Um, I think we have a lot of furniture that are, are um, Facilities department has had the lovely duty of getting together and trying to sort through and figure out what's good, bad, or indifferent. I do think we have the significant stockpile of several of those things that wouldn't be in this order, but this would allow us to uh, get this order. It's going to be obviously some time to allow that order to get here. Um, then that would allow facilities to plan the move along with IT. And then as we start putting it in and get, uh, start getting that move, we can then identify what, if anything else, is a glaring need as far as cabinets or other chairs or things along that nature. Um, after we kind of have a little bit of a consolidation of all of the furniture we have everywhere in the county at this point in time. So my suggestion would be an authorization uh, to utilize uh, the Pulse technology bid and uh, not to exceed 175000 to stay within those guidelines as far as the desks and the chairs and the conference room tables and their chairs, and then that would allow that um, order to be taken place. Yeah. So just to keep in mind, the adult probation department that is going on the second floor uh, really is not housed anywhere. They're housed all over the county right now. So they've never really had furniture or uh, things for their own department, uh, and then the prosecutor in 4911, you know, a lot of the office sizes have changed, and a lot of the older desks, the smaller offices, a lot of the older desks just don't fit, so um, 
we're, we're the building facility is still working through a lot of our uh, office furniture, and we're cataloging it and trying to round it all up. And uh, a lot of it's very, very, very old. So um, uh, you know, I think I think 175 is fine. Uh, we can get everybody situated, and then waiting chairs, break room stuff. I think we can probably piece some of this stuff together with what we have. So we're trying to be frugal, but yet um, seems sort of, I don't know, seems sort of odd to go out and spend all this money on a brand new building and then put 50-year-old furniture in it. Just, I, I think Especially when it doesn't fit. Right? When it doesn't fit. So uh, it, it, it's another chunk we have to bite, but uh, seeing how office furniture lasts around here for a pretty long time, I think it's a good investment. So, um, so yeah, that was the... Uh, so I think uh, I, I would make the motion to approve the Pulse Technology PO uh, for $175,000 max, uh, and uh, that's my motion. Okay. We have a motion and a second for Pulse Technology for an amount not to exceed $175,000 for office furniture for $157,000. Uh, Franklin, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Post same sign, motion period. And Anthony, 911, I see you sitting back here. I know we've been telling you all along that you weren't getting new furniture. We found enough money and you're getting new furniture. <laughs> so um, we had you hanging on the cliff there for a while, but I didn't want to commit to something that we didn't have the money for. So sorry for taking you through that, but we made it work for you. <laughs> so good news for 911 again. Okay. Um, I think that concludes uh, with Pulse Technology, so now we'll move on to the agenda. Thank you, guys. Um, we have the County Health Officer, Dr. Stamp, uh, here this morning to give us a COVID update. Uh, welcome. Thank you. I thought we did. Oh, excuse me, Dr. Nope, Stamp. Something else first. We got, no, you can stay right there. There's, we also have an equipment maintenance agreement and the amount of $976.63 for the mail machine uh, and scale in the admin building, that's for Pulse Technology to open it for the floor. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Now, welcome again. Thank you, Commissioner. Good, Blaney, and Fig. Thank you for allowing me to be here today to discuss the current state of COVID-19 pandemic in Porter County. Your ongoing support is appreciated and critical to our mission. Uh, in giving an update, I'd like to go back and look at where we've been. Our last address to the Board of Commissioners was March 17th. At that time, we were anticipating a bleak future where hospital beds would be in short supply Critical patients would need to share ventilators. Alternative care sites were sought. And critical frontline workers would go without protective equipment. It was a horrifying prospect for a health department and the community it served. And then came Indiana's stay at home order, where we hunkered down, we navigated e learning, we worked from home, we entertained ourselves, we lost jobs. We became anxious, isolated, and depressed. But the collective sacrifice made great strides towards flattening the curve of COVID-19 and controlling the virus. So this, in combination with increased testing, allowed the stay-at-home order to be lifted incrementally. In May and June, our infection rates were at their lowest in three months. We were able to preserve hospital capacity and obtain personal protective equipment. Porter County had its lowest test positivity rate at the beginning of June. Since then, there has been an increased rate of positive tests across our region. A much larger portion of those new positive cases are in the younger age groups, under 30. Young people must understand that even though they may have few symptoms and no complications from COVID, that they can spread the infection to their parents their grandparents, and those they work with. Increased cases in youth may jeopardize the ability for schools to open for in-class instruction. 
and yet still our hospitalization and death rates remain low. So some are wondering if the virus has changed, perhaps become more contagious but less deadly. <coughs> COVID-19 has not become less deadly. Currently in many states, COVID-19 is overwhelming ICUs and death rates are climbing. Indiana's hospitalization rate has increased some in the past three weeks. <coughs> Porter County's hospitalization rate will also increase if we are not vigilant. So the mission of the Porter County Health Department is to promote and protect the health and well-being of the community. And as such, the role of the health department during the COVID-19 pandemic is to process surveillance or data collection and provide guidance to the community and advance the mission of the health department and ensure the spread of COVID-19 is as limited as possible. So the point is our behavior today affects hospitalizations and death rates three weeks to two months from now. The ripple effects can be extensive. <clears throat> it is known that face coverings can decrease the spread of the virus from asymptomatic and mildly symptomatic COVID positive patients. We know the risk of transmission when people are outdoors is much lower than when indoors. However, crowds and mass gatherings, whether indoors or outdoors, greatly increase the risk of disease spread. The science is clear. Keep distance, at least six feet when possible, even when outdoors. Wear a mask in public, especially when social distancing is not possible. Wash hands frequently. Do not leave your home if you're not feeling well. Get tested if you're feeling unwell, have been exposed, or are concerned that you might be infected. Testing is available in Porter County, and we're working to improve availability of testing. We recognize that availability is still uh, a, an issue. Uh, testing locations can be found on the Indiana State Department of Health website at coronavirus.in.gov. Now, in Porter County, we wish to continue the success that we've had in beating this pandemic. We want to enjoy the things that make life fun. We want to go out to eat, visit with friends and family, shop, do sports, make a living. And we need to do the right things which keep the virus from spreading and protect each other. So in Porter County, the expectation will be that those gathered in public wear face coverings. So examples follow, but are not limited to offices and factories where employees sit and work together in close proximity, retail establishments for employees and shoppers, restaurants where it's already the law for employees to wear face coverings at all times while at work, diners should mask up when entering and walk to their table. And school. Parents, administrators, and teachers all will create the culture and expectation that face coverings be worn and can be tolerated in the learning environment. I currently believe that the people of Porter County will cooperate for our collective well-being and safety. I have confidence that the people of Porter County can do the right thing. The Porter County Health Department will remain vigilant and advise the county leadership as the trends in our local data rise or fall. Today's takeaway is that we have a responsibility to work together to protect each other. Keep your distance, wear your face covering, wash your hands, support one another, and persevere. I'm happy to elaborate on anything or answer any questions that you may have. Is there, is, uh, Dr. Stamp, is there more, uh, <laughs> more testing going on now than there was maybe 30 days ago? Testing is available. So, for instance, we have swabs and the ability to do testing. We've had in the past couple of weeks when it's been so hot, difficulty getting testing done at the Armory, which is the Optum site that's contracted with the State Department of Health, um, because they are, you know, OSHA requirements keep them from working in the heat, and the Armory is not air-conditioned. 
So they've had to cancel many appointments in the past couple of weeks. They really try hard to reschedule them. Um, they even work with some walk-ins for people that are registered and weren't able to get to their appointments. So we've seen testing availability decrease a little bit in the past couple of weeks. We're working on that issue, trying to find them a new location. Um, and, uh, and hopefully we can get that um, sorted out in the next couple of days is our plan. So the state selected a location for the testing mm -hmm. that didn't have air conditioning? Correct. Because of OSHA violations, they've had to close at a certain time. And people who have wanted that test couldn't get that test. Right. That's remarkable. It, <laughs> yes. They, um, you know, the, the state worked really hard to get testing up and running quickly. And back in March and April, uh, the armories were available and could quickly be converted to accommodate the testing. Uh, so that was the initial decision that was made. Um, and it worked pretty well here in Valparaiso for a couple months until the temperature gets over 85. And they're really, because they're all dressed in their gowns and masks and face shields and um, as they're taking the information and doing the testing. I, I, think, you're, I think you're being too kind. <laughs> Aren't there also some delays getting results now that we're Right. So as wide? we've seen, so for instance, you know, Florida had over 15,000 case, new cases reported just the day before yesterday. And... Um, so across the country, we're seeing this uptick, and uh, it's difficult for the labs to keep up uh, with the amount of tests that are being collected. The samples that are being collected are having a hard time getting run and getting results back. We're looking around here at between three and five days, depending on the lab that's being used. So um, even though our rates in Porter County are still pretty low, um, we had a record week last week. So that's probably not from increased testing. Right. So um, if you look at our, uh, the graph that's on the county website um, and the daily new numbers, uh, some of it has to do with the fact that, that we did had no testing over Fourth of July weekend. Um, only, really only if you went to the emergency department and had received a test there would you have gotten tested. So if you look at those dates, like the 5th and the 6th and maybe even the 7th, our numbers were fairly low. And then we had numbers on par with our highest numbers back in March and April. So some of that balance is out. But if you look at our seven-day um, yeah, our seven day rolling average, it still is, is it definitely on an upswing here. So what do you expect for the next few weeks? Or I mean, do you have any predictions? Right. Well, I think a lot of uh, what happens in the next few weeks hinges on how the people of Porter County respond. And really, are we going to take this seriously, wear our masks, um, avoid crowded gatherings? You know, those places are out there still. And some of it's spontaneous, you know, parties at or after going to the beach. Um, I don't want to throw the beach, you know, under the, I love the beach myself, but um, really we, got, we, we need to encourage our youth to kind of keep distance. And, um, you know, we're seeing, we're seeing people coming back from, you know, visiting with family or family reunions in other states and, um, and coming back positive with a number of their family members. Once it's in a household, it's really hard to keep it from everybody in the household. So we see a, a lot of husband, wives, youth, adults, those kind of family units uh, yeah. too. I agree, I agree, Dr. Stamford, that individually we all need to, to, to do our part. And, but that also includes government. You know, when government is out there uh, uh, okaying or approving protests uh, in their public roads, uh, that ain't helping. And somebody needs to point that out. We can't, on one hand, can't lecture to the public about what they should be doing, and on the other hand, we're, we're saying or approving those, those types of activities in our own public right-of-ways. That's wrong. But I, 
I do agree with you. We are living in difficult times. Yes, we are. They keep saying yes, unprecedented. We yes, we are. Yes. So while we're speaking about masks, um, I have seen more people wearing masks in the last few days, and that's a big positive. But I've also seen a lot of people wearing them in ways that probably aren't as protective as they're supposed to be. Does the health department have any, um, maybe we could get some signs for the building? or? Absolutely. There are some really great infographics okay. about uh, the appropriate way to wear masks you know, as best you can. It's difficult, you know, especially when you're not used to wearing one and positioning it on your face. You start talking and you're like, it's slipping down. Yeah. So avoid touching your mask after you've placed it on, um, taking your mask down, not putting it under your chin, washing your hands after you touch your mask. Those kind of things are really Maybe all very we important. Help the health we do have some of that stuff out on Facebook. I want the Happy mask that, that allows me to wear glasses and not fog up. I'm I'm, yeah, I'm in that same situation. Good luck. Um, okay, I also wanted to ask about the schools. There's a lot going on with the schools right now, and what's the health department's role exactly, and how's that all working? Sure. So the health department is um, there was uh, there's been a lot of guidance that's been released by the State Department of Health in conjunction with the Department of Education. The CDC has guidance. There's uh, recommendations on how to decrease risk or, um, from private organizations, Harvard School of Public Health, American Academy of Pediatrics, all have great um, documents that are helpful for this. We've designated three of our nurses um, to understand the guidelines and recommendations well because wading through, I mean, it's hundreds of pages of uh, recommendations and guidelines to understand. So I've designated, we've designated three that are um, going to or and have been um, in uh, liaison with uh, the superintendents and the school nurses and um, Working through, they have been reviewing the reopening plans um, of, I believe, almost every school district in the county and then some of the private schools also. Um, and uh, we work kind of as a consulting role. We are um, pointing out things that might be an error with what we do for contact tracing. Um, in, and we are kind of encouraged, giving them suggestions, uh, helping them adjust their plans as is uh, per guidelines and recommendations. Every school district is different. Um, even within Porter County, it really varies from school district to school district. The facilities they have, the, uh, maybe the risk of the teachers and the employees in their district, uh, so, uh, no uh, two plans look exactly the same, mm -hmm. um, and we're really, but there are a lot of really creative uh, people in the schools that, you know, think outside the box, too. So, um, there have been some, some really great ideas that have been uh, put forward to help decrease risk of uh, disease spread in the schools. So. Um, it's it's going to be a uh, a moving target for a while, and um, you know there will be starts and stops. I suspect um, you know some schools have already decided they're not going to start immediately with in class um, instruction, but others have you know pretty much committed to it and have allowed for families to make their decisions however they feel um, most comfortable uh, with their family risk. So. They really worked hard to kind of be creative along those lines and come up with good um, risk mitigation strategies. Any other questions from the board of Dr. Stamp? Thank you. I would just like to say, uh, you know, in the county we did our testing. Uh, we did it out at the expo in that air condition mm -hmm. 4-H building. So uh, as you're talking with the state, let them know that that facility is available. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of parking out there, and there's not a lot going on out there right now. So um, I think it would be a good spot 
It's sort of in the center of the county. <laughs> and it is, that building is air conditioned, mm -hmm. and it has garage doors on both ends. Uh, I think if you went out for our testing, you saw uh, how Franciscan. Mm -hmm. uh, it was smooth. It, it, it was mm -hmm. smooth. So yeah. I'm just offering that up. Uh, and the testing may be moving to a county program, right? Supported by the state? Right. That is in potentially in the works. Um, the state is. Uh, tossing around the idea of um, dissolving the contract that they have with OptumServe and placing it in the hands of the counties, if they can do that, or the FQHCs, the, um, the community clinics, if the county can't um, absorb that. So um, there's uh, support from the state and money available wouldn't start until September um, and then it would be a commitment through June of next year. Uh, our size county would uh, qualify for two clinics, um, two testing sites. So uh, we're, we're looking into options for that also. So um, certainly if, uh, if you have sites that might be uh, fit that kind of bill for the next few months, that'd be really helpful. We, we are to. going to be opening up a uh, North County garage on 700 North, which is right across from South Haven, which is sort of the epicenter of the Portage breakout. Um, that's right on 700 North. I think it's going to be finished in the next couple months. And you may want to take a look at that because uh, it'll, be, it'll be done before September. Yeah. Now I don't know if that has air conditioning in the main building. I know the small office area uh, does, but I don't know if the main. I don't believe the main does. Space do. Right. It's, it's a great location. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Very Taking central. Over until September. The heat might not be as much of an issue. Right. Right. Exactly. So and I'm just throwing that out there. That. It's up in that area. Okay, thank um, you. It's yeah. more of a garage open kind of, you know, big ceilings, mm -hmm. and it's not like it's... The safest know. places to do the testing, yeah. really. So okay. just keep that in mind, and if someone wants to run up there, let us know. I think it's still a construction site, uh, so just let us know, and we can accommodate accordingly. Excellent. I can't think thank of anything anywhere question. else we could do something I, off the top of my head. I no. don't think the new no. complex and where we're at by the courthouse, I don't think we can do anything there. So, right. uh, Dr. Stanford, is, is the state going to reimburse, um, maybe this is a better question for Lily, uh, for the costs involved uh, of, you know, basically we're, we're becoming our own, you're going to, That's you're right. going to manage the collections of, of the test. Right, right. So the state has um, mm -hmm. set aside, uh, apparently there's some money available per testing site, so depending on the size of your county, you'd get a different varying amount of money. Um, and uh, I believe the amount that they uh, mentioned was $50,000 per site um, for that nine months. So, uh, you know, a, a decent bite of that gets uh, taken if we need to hire people. I don't think we could do this. They really want us to be open on weekends and after hours. It'd be difficult to do that with our current staff and man two clinics also. So we'd have to do some hiring. Um, and, uh, but that does not include what the state picks up, which is they included training, personal protective equipment, the testing supplies, the courier to the lab, the cost of running the test, and the interface for register, the computer interface for registration and for portal receiving results. So it's a, on the initial look at it, it, it looks pretty generous, um, but you know, the, the numbers are, the devil's you, in the detail, think, and we don't have You think 50000 is generous well, <laughs> for nine months of collection? No, no, I'm not saying the number is generous. I'm saying what they're, the support they're offering is generous in terms of not having to worry about paying for the tests up front and those kind of things, um, not having to pay for the computer system. Well, I, I think um, they're looking at us because they, 
they they fumbled the ball. I think they and probably they, they ultimately saved money. And and yes. yeah. They would That's ultimately I, save money having 92 counties do this mm -hmm. as opposed to having Optum sites. Um, but uh, it all kind of depends what our overhead would end up costing, whether we could swing it or not. Well, I'm, I'm sure you guys will show them how it should have been done. <laughs> That'll be our plan. Yeah. Thank well, you, Commissioner. Yeah, any more questions? Any, I know anything you need from us, just let us know. And I know you talked to Laura a lot, and, and that's great. So, I, And I want to thank you for coming in front of us today and uh, giving us some facts and things to think about. And, uh, I'm, you know, we all have to continue to hunker down and practice and be good stewards. And... Uh, it's, this is on us, and we, we need to, to manage it the best way we can. And thank you for your guidance and help and support. I know this is not a traditional thing that our health department normally does, so uh, this, this department got uh, shaken up quite a bit, too, because this is just new on everybody. So thanks for it hanging is, but in it's there. what we're here for. This, yep, is, this yep, is what exactly, we are made for. So. Exactly. Are you starting thank to you. see <laughs> compliance last thing with, with face masks? at restaurants and I know there were some complaints and you guys are <coughs> addressing it more. Yes, we, um, in the past week or two, we've seen uh, much better compliance in the food establishments um, with the employees wearing their masks. So, yeah, I That's think... That's a state mandate, but anything else is. would come from you. <coughs> if Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just know because the few times that I've been out, I always get singled out by the owner asking me why we're making them do what we do. And mm -hmm. I just. Because <laughs> we don't want COVID all over. We need to protect yeah, That's another department question. The last thing we want to get back in our nursing homes, right? I mean, that yep. was that was horrible. So. But I stayed at a Holiday Inn Express Thank you. Last night. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next up, health insurance audit. Boy, we just got all kinds of good stuff going on here today. Uh, this is with GIS. Good morning. All right, so the health insurance audit that we're discussing today is actually an eligibility audit. So it's essentially just making sure that the folks that are on your guys' plan are legally supposed to be and allowed to be on your guys' plan. Um, from the conversations we had in our uh, strategic planning meeting, this uh, has It's been a quite a while. Since it, yeah, yeah it, it's been several years. We recommend doing this every you know, three to five years. Yeah, um, we agree. Yeah, so um, that's... That <laughs> So that's the uh, proposal that you guys have in front of you today, and uh, th ideally this is something that we would prefer to do sooner rather than later, obviously yeah. mm -hmm. going into next year. Yeah. So. Well, that's why we had the strategic meeting, and this is one of several issues to tackle over the next year, or, you know, somewhere between now and 24 months, and this yeah. was one that we thought we could do right now Correct. quickly and um, get it taken off the list as part of that plan that mine through the plan well, kind of one step at a time, but this gets us going in that direction, and that's why we've moved so quickly to get it on this agenda so we can take that off the list and move on with it. You got it. Yep. Uh, motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to second for the health insurance audit uh, perform, uh, with GIS insurance. Uh, all of those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Post same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Okay, next up we got 157 Franklin Street. These are pay apps, and just so everybody know, it looks daunting, but we can do all of these in one <laughs> motion. So the motion would be pertaining for pay apps for 157 Franklin on agenda items number one through nine. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second for 157 Franklin Street pay apps. Uh, numbers one through nine on the agenda. All of those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Post same sign. Motion carries. Next up is for the North County Annex. And again, these are all pay apps. And we could do these all together as well. Um, and this would be one through six. Um, so the motion would be North County Annex. Pay apps, items one through six on the agenda. So moved. Second. 
We have a motion and a second for North County Addicts payouts. Items one through six. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. See how we did that, Laura? Made him make his, his own motion. He didn't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sheriff Dave Reynolds. I see Edie in the, I think that's Edie in the mask, I think. Um, hi, Edie. Is that Laura? Kathy. Kathy. Oh, hi, Kathy. See what Welcome. Like. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this is for South Point Partners. This is a commercial lease agreement between the Porter County Board of Commissioners and South Point Partners in the amount of 2000 per month. What is the term of the lease? It's for, is it, it's for the year. It's just for one year? Okay. Motion to approve. Uh, second. We have a motion to second for South Point Partners lease agreement with the Porter County Board of Commissioners and South Point Partners in the amount of 2000 a month. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Posting sign, motion carries. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. Next up, we have Cindy Dykes uh, Corner. I know Cindy's not going to be here, but she does have someone in the audience. This is a second reading on an ordinance that we established at the last meeting for a reimbursement grant for the Indiana State Department of Health Fatality Review and Prevention, Prevention Division, uh, SUID, SBY, case registry grant number 61910, funded by the Center for D Disease Control, second reading. I'll open it to the floor. Motion to approve on second reading. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Pull the same sign. Motion carries. Uh, this is for EMA. This once again is a another uh, declaration for an additional 30 days for the Porter County Shoreline Disaster Emergency Declaration and Travel Restriction. This is an update to what's currently on uh, on record. As we noticed before, you can only county can only declare an emergency for 30 days at a time, and so this gets the next 30 days. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second for the Porter County Shoreline Disaster Emergency Declaration and Travel Restriction. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, we already did Memorial Opera House, so we're going to skip. And now uh, we got uh, our auditor, Vicki Urbanic. Yes, morning. Morning, Vicki. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm before you today for the annual uh, agreement with our consultant who prepares the cost allocation plan. This is a report that is required by the federal government in order to get federal reimbursement for the indirect costs associated with our county's child support program. Yep. And so um, last year when I was before you, we had a one-year contract. Today I am asking for you to do something a little unusual and to approve the three-year contract. This will fix the cost uh, uh, for the next three years, and this will get us through the end of my term. Yep. So we're not going to... So you won't have to deal right, with me coming before you. What we said early on up here, we're not going to enter into agreements that are past our term, and I, I respect you for that. Thank you. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second for DOSIC Consulting. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Post same sign. Motion carries. And if I could just make one comment about the um, cost recovery that we received this year, it was $185,446. Oh. And that was from the 2018 data for use in 2020. So the next three years will cover, you know, 21 through 22 and 23. Definitely will. And work. that money goes straight into the general fund. It's not assigned well, to my... Well, the council should like that. <laughs> Especially since maybe other miscellaneous revenues are going to be going exactly. down in the general exactly. fund. We do need to recover our indirect yep. costs. So thank so you very good. much. Thank you, Vicki. Okay. okay. IT. Don Wilson. Hey, Don. Can we, we do one and two together, and three and four together? Okay, so on our agenda, we're going to do one and two together, and we're going to do three and four together. So 
So the first one is for Adams. Both of them, one and two, are for Adams Ren Go. One is a copy machine purchase agreement for the museum uh, in the amount of $10,497.74. So this is an item that the county does fund for the Poco Museum. I know a lot of people think that they're self-reliant, and they are for the most part, but the county does uh, assist them in a lot of other areas. And we have a three-year copier maintenance agreement for the same uh, copier for the museum. A motion to approve the purchase agreement and the maintenance agreement for the museum's copier. Second. We have a motion and second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Close same sign. Motion carries. Next one is for Adams Remco. This is a, a purchase agreement for a copier for the Portage Township Assessor's Office in the amount of $8,687. Uh, we now we'll get them a new copier to go with their new space. We can do number four. And we can do number four too, which is a one-year copier maintenance agreement for the Portage Township Assessor's Office. I'll throw that to the floor. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to second for Adams Remco for Portage Township Assessor's Office for the purchase of a copier and a one-year maintenance agreement. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next up, number five, we have NITCO. Uh, this is an internet contract for the animal shelter in the amount of $109.95. That's monthly, right, Don? Yeah, this is just their uh, three-year contract we signed with NITCO. Three years? Yep. Throw it to the floor. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to second for NITCO for an internet contract for the animal shelter. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. And we have a contract to relocate, or to locate, not relocate, to locate Porter County government's underground telecommunication transmission circuits in the amount of 9000 Why don't you give us a little snippet of what's going okay. on here? We, uh, we own a bunch of uh, private fiber throughout the county between our buildings, and uh, we have to have a locator that will locate our fiber lines in case someone wants to do digging or that type ah. of work around there. So. We uh, pay NITCO $3,000 a year to be our locator. Okay. So this is a three-year contract for this. Okay. So it keeps it, they know where it's at, and they it's monitor it. Okay. So it's $3,000 a year for three years. Yes. Throw that to the floor for action. Motion to approve. Second. Uh, we have a motion and second. Uh, for a contract to locate Porter County government's underground telecommunication circuits in the amount of $9,000 over three years, 3000 a year. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Same sign. Motion carries. And then last, we have NITCO. Again, this is a contract for telephone circuits at the Doppel Courthouse in the amount of $1,116. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and second for NITCO. Telephone circuits at the Doppel Courthouse, $1,116. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Post same sign. Motion carries. Um, just real briefly here, um, why we got you in front. This is definitely impromptu, but um, like we'd like to announce that uh, Don Wellson, who's in front of us here, is going to be retiring from Porter County government. I can tell you I'm pretty sad about it. Um, he's, he, he's been the IT person up here as long as I've been up here, and uh, we've made a lot of headway up here over the last five and a half years, Don, and I just want to thank you. I know this afternoon we have a lot of interviews, and we're going to be spending some time together to pick your replacement, um, but it's sort of bittersweet, and I know you have a lot of fun things to go off and do, and I don't blame you. I think COVID gives everybody a different perspective on things that have gone through it. But we're going to miss you, buddy. Yep. Uh, I know I am. And, uh, you know, good job. Well, it's been a good 15 and a half years. And I turned 71 this month, so it's, it's time to quit. <laughs> I know. We've talked. Um, still going to miss you. Yeah. Right, thank um, you. You know, I, one of the things, if you see these NITCO contracts that we just approved, it's, I, I, a lot of people don't, when we started four years ago, the county has spent quite a bit of money over the last five years in building out our uh, infrastructure, fiber infrastructure within the city of Alparaiso. Uh, we're now to a point where I think all of our county IT is redundant. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we, yeah. we can go <laughs> forwards, backwards. We can something goes down, we can go around. We, I mean, and that 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 took time. It took effort. It took money. Um, but I think all of this technology that we're spending money on now, uh, we have a really good foundation uh, to be able to work this new equipment off. So I just want to thank you. That stuff. I know every time we spent money to go put more infrastructure in, we always bragged about it, but it never really got picked up anywhere. But these are the kind of things that, that as we move into the new future, uh, that's going to be the backbone of how county government operates and how we communicate. So I, mean, I think the future... it's going well, you don't notice it. Right. So the future is bright for Porter County with regards to IT infrastructure. We've invested not only in infrastructure, but we've also invested a lot over the last three years just in servers, uh, access points, making uh, making our speeds better, doing all types of things. So um, I think I think we're they're leaving it in a really good spot. And we just hope that we can hope and pray that we pick the right person to move forward. Uh, IT uh, is the new it's it's the new thing. You, you really need to be on it. It's it's not it's not going away and uh, we have to be on guard up here, and, and I want to thank you for being on guard uh, over the past. So thank you, Don. <clears throat> I'd like to just take a second. I'd like to thank my staff because I've got a great, great bunch of people down there, and uh, it probably couldn't have been done without them. So yep. I'd like to thank them too. Yep. Thanks, Governments Don. Governments are typically behind yeah. APOL on IT stuff, and, and you've allowed us to be a lot better than that. Yep. I really appreciate it. Right, thank you. Thank you, Don. Okay, facilities. We go from one rock star to another. Ray Corey <laughs> Building Facilities. What do you got for us, Ray? Uh, we're going to look at upgrading the parking garage um, payment system from coin to coin and credit card, debit card. Oh, that would be great. So we're upgrade it. <laughs> We've talked about this for a few years, haven't we? No more people. Yep backed up because they can't find 50 cents on the floor. Right, right. <laughs> We've had the line pretty long for 50 cents there before, so hopefully we can work through this. I've had yep. to pass out a lot of quarters just yeah. to get the line moving. I got a quarter bag in my truck now just in case I have to jump out and pay it forward. Um, my question, Ray, does this have built-in PCI compliance? Yes. For the credit cards? Yes. Okay, good. That was my question. <clears throat> yeah, that comes with a $55 uh, maintenance fee, the, the D2 with it, oh. for them to do it. Okay, throw it to the floor. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion second for Light and Bruni. This is a quote regarding the parking garage payment system in the admin building for $8,239 with a $55 monthly fee for maintenance. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. When is that supposed to happen? Well, I'm going to sign it and send it to them, so hopefully within the next two to three weeks it will be done. I know it needs repairs, but we didn't want to do repairs and spend yeah. the money right. on it, and we'd just rather do the upgrade. Yep. All right. what, uh, Ray, one of the things we want to talk about, it's been on our docket for a long time like this, but I'd, I'd like to look into next year uh, possibly putting some more cameras up in the garage too. Okay. Because uh, I think we, we, need, we need to do that. Um, especially with our access point of entries uh, on the outside to this building. So that's something that we'd like to knock out over time. And okay. I think that's next on the garage list, and then we should be pretty much done there, hopefully. Right. So good. thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Thanks, Ray. Have a good day. Next up, Highway Department. We got Rich Sexton in charge. Great, how are you doing, Rich? Oh, I'm good, huh? Doing roads. <laughs> doing roads, yeah. Okay, we have a quest to transfer of funds. This is uh, Fund 1176 from Account 3120 Consultants to Account 3430 Workman's Comp in the amount of $8,000 to cover increase in work comps. So just so you know, the county is self-funded uh, on their Workman's Comp uh, program, so um, this would be in addition to uh, covering that insurance. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion second for transfer of funds. 
an amount of $8,000 for the highway department to cover increase in work comp insurance. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank Thanks very much. much. Hang in there, man. Yeah. That's some good. Water. Yep. <laughs> stay, stay cool. Robert Thompson and Mike Novotny. Development, stormwater management up. First one is an agreement with Kankakee Valley REMC to relocate their utility poles for the 100 South project. Yes, this is for the 100 South uh, federal aid project that we have going. And essentially, uh, Kankakee Valley REMC has a lot of poles that are outside of our county right away, and there's a number of poles inside of our right away. Those that are inside of our right away, uh, REMC will move at their expense, but those that are outside of our apparent right away that we have, we have to pay for the relocation of these poles. So this is what this agreement is. What's the dollar amount? Right off. Sorry. <laughs> no, I should have written it down. Um, I wanted to say it was around 35000 in that range. I don't. I'm, I well, look it up. Um, I have the paperwork down here. I'm sorry, I didn't make a copy for myself. We're looking on our computers too. We might have it on here. In the meantime, forty-five thousand one hundred eighty-three dollars and three cents. There you go. Nope. Thank you. Sorry, it's a little right long. Right into the record. <laughs> forty-five what? Forty-five thousand one hundred eighty-three dollars and three cents. Okay. There you go. To the board. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second for an agreement with Kankakee Valley REMC to relocate their utility poles for the 100 South project in the amount of $45,183.03. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Post same sign. Motion carries. That's a, that's a pretty good project for the people in the county that don't know. I think you know there's a roundabout going at the five-way over to Lake of Four Seasons. This 100 South is the road to Lake of Four Seasons, and the county will be flattening the road out, they'll be uh, improving the intersections to all the roads that tie into 100 South. It's a five-way. It's, it's, it's been dangerous for a long time. Yeah, it's a very dangerous a road curve. and shading some hills down, sight lines, make, just making it much safer. Uh, this has been a project that has bounced back and forth for 20 years. We're finally going to finish it uh, next year, so this is part of that to set that work up. We also had to buy a lot of right-of-way, too, and I think right-of-way acquisition has pretty much been done, too, correct? I think we had a... Correct. Number, We're down about two, two parcels. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, INDOT, what do you got here? This is a project coordination contract for the replacement of County Bridge 168. Why don't you give us... Bridge 168 is Brummer Road over the Little Calumet River. It's just right next to the Brummer uh, Elementary School. On that, uh, we are getting really close to the uh, right-of-way coordination for this particular project. Um, we're past stage two in the engineering plans on this for the design on that. Um, the reason we, we need this uh, agreement in place, this agreement is with NDOT and the Porter County for the purposes of getting the federal aid money with which they will manage on that. But what's important with the agreement is, is there's an EDS number on that along with the DES number um, where the consultant will need that to go forward with the right-of-way acquisition. Will there be a walking uh, a pedestrian uh, area there to walk across that bridge? Um, we did not construct a sidewalk per se on that. Uh, we did widen it, and then we requested it to be built um, structurally to handle sidewalks on both sides. If for s some reason Chesterton goes out there and annexes and they want really sidewalks on it, then we would do it. What we did do over on the east side of the bridge is have a widened shoulder, considerably widened shoulder. And then we also asked for the um, guardrail to go up even higher than normal that you would see. Most Jersey barriers you see are for vehicles. We had an increased height and it was for the pedestrian people and those people that like to bicycle up that road yeah. to make sure that they stay on the road. Um, because it is designated as a pathway in our tourism 
right. as far as that goes. But we also have um, the kayak launch, and we've been working with Shirley Hines Land Trust on that as far as keeping that uh, kayak launch viable. We've changed up the guard rail and items on that, so that way we can work with them as far as having them launch. But it moves so close to the elementary school right there, so you correct. feel that that wider design will could accommodate Correct. Oh, yes. I mean, it's better than an eight-foot wide shoulder that we're putting over on that bridge, and it's, I believe they're 12-foot lanes. Okay. Yeah. There's another bridge we're working on, too, up there that will have the trail on it, correct? Put up the pedestrian trail. That's the one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know, know what bridge number I'm it is. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's 149. 149. 149. There you go. Bridge 149, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone knows what that is. Yeah. 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 Up yeah. there. No, there there was Porter had a trail and in order to Correct. get this bridge replaced, we're gonna be uh, taking over and moving the trail to the bridge. because um, the bridge is not safe anymore. So we're 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 gonna make that happen on that bridge. And I get them mixed up because that's when when you started talking about this one, I thought it was that one. I got confused, so I think we were in the same boat, Jim. So, um, but it's one of them bridges up there. Mm -hmm. With this one, 168 is designed. It'll be rural cross section yeah. now. We programmed it in so we could go urban cross section with sidewalks in the future. It'll be it'll be built so it can it can right. have Correct. Those. Right. Yeah. And I think on the other bridge that we were talking about with the trail on the bridge, we're actually going to work with the town of Porter to help them get a little more right away because they have some sewer work that they want to continue on through. So Correct. we're going to go in when we're doing our right away acquisition, we're going to pick up that extra ground to work with them to help them improve and expand their boundaries of their town. Correct. So it's just working with right. the different town and trying to come up, you know, when we go do something at two years from now, you look, well, why did, why did they do all this work and why didn't they do that? And that's, that's what we're trying to do is get out ahead. Everything we're looking at is 30 years out. So it um, takes a little more time, a little more effort, but I think in the end, you set yourself up for the next 30 years. So that's what we're doing up here. So we're voting on the project coordination contract, and who is the engineer on this one? On uh, this particular one, it's USI Consultants. Okay. So it's for USI Consultants. So to the board. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and second for project coordination contract for the replacement of County Bridge 168. That's at County Road 250 and East Brummett Road over the Little Cow River, east of the town of Chesterton. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. And then what's next here, Scott? Uh, Bob. Uh, Scott. This is an MDOT agreement. Again, one quick thing. I mean, both of these agreements are with MDOT. It's for the purposes of receiving the federal money on this. Um, this here again is the same thing. MDOT agreement for Bridge 150. This is Mineral Springs Road over Little Calumet River. This is just south of uh, US 20, and it's in the town of Porter. Mm -hmm. And who is the engineer again? The engineer on this is SEH. SEH, okay. Go ahead to the board. Second. We have a motion and second for a project coordination contract uh, for the replacement of County Bridge 150, carrying Mineral, Mineral Springs Roads over Little Cow River. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Post same sign. Motion carries. Demont State Bank, this is an, before us today, is an irrevocable letter of credit for Stonebridge Subdivision. Go ahead to the board. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second for DeMott State Bank for a letter of credit, irrevocable letter of credit for Stonebridge Subdivision. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay. Oh, I'm going to let Bob Thompson handle this since he's our cycler uh, extraordinaire <laughs> here in Porter County Government. Um. <laughs> <laughs> nice lead. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. This is, um, I was approached probably just a week or so before the uh, shutdown with the COVID on this, uh, asking for the Porter County Commissioners to support a United States bicycle route uh, 37 that will run through or is proposed to run through Porter County. It 
basically starts at 900 South at the Lake County Line Road, takes 900 South all the way across to 250 and down 250 West across the bridge of the Kankakee River and heads on. And essentially this is connecting, in short, Chicago to Indianapolis by bike routes. Um, this recommendation would go to the Indiana Department of Transportation's uh, pedestrian planner and also eventually over to AASHTO, uh, the American Association of State Highway and Transportation officials that oversees a lot of the bike routes. Also, there is a, another organization that's behind this, um, and it's uh, Adventure Cycling Association out of Montana that has mapped bike routes across the United States and even into Canada and Mexico and a few places. Um, they, uh, well, granted it's an organization I belong to and everything, but it, the whole idea was trying to find safe travel ways for touring cyclists. Now this isn't your family cyclist, this is a touring cyclist that wants to cross the United States or go someplace or do something like I wanted to, is like um, hop on my bike someday with backpacks on and go very around. Experienced cyclists. Yeah, and go around Lake Michigan. So. And they have a lot of these routes booked out. So that's what this is about. They do take their time to find routes that have shoulders on it or yeah. roads that are in very low volume in the rural areas for directing the cyclists through. And to give you an idea, I, my biking group has stopped and talked to people from France that are making their way up from these areas up into Chicago. So, I mean, it. it you get people from all over the world that are coming over here cycling, so that this is what this is. It's just a resolution supporting uh, Adventure Cycling Association and INDOT for designating this as a route. Good, Good idea. Approve. Second. We have a motion and second for a resolution supporting designation of the United States Bicycle Route 37. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Uh, Benny, real quick, uh, Mr. Go ahead, Jeff. Uh, are they going to, pretty quickly here, uh, will they uh, put up signage where people can? One of the, they have to go around and get uh, resolutions from all the counties and the cities and towns that the route goes through. Or so that's they're going to go. Okay. So eventually when they uh, get all of that done, I know, as I showed you, there are some other examples with uh, uh, Lafayette and another county that have done that. But once they start collecting those, they'll go about doing that. So I right. should point out, too, that there is another U.S. bicycle route, and it's up in the very north part to basically connect Chicago on into um, southwest Michigan. Yeah. I'd also like to point out, you know, having, having the, being on the board of NICTI, uh, the, the Bikes for Trains program that they've had at, at, at the South Shore for years, I mean, you're seeing, you're seeing double-digit growth uh, in bicycling coming out of the city to this area, and uh, it, it's, it's these are numbers that have been growing over the last five years since they started that program on, on the South Shore. And I, I know, you know, we're trying to move forward on the Calumet Trail and we're working through all those things. But uh, I think cycling has a really good future in Porter County. And I think, uh, as we've talked about before, as we're looking at some of our roads and we start creating uh, bike paths and things through our county, those, those are areas that we hope to be able to sort of handle a little bit differently from a paving or a, a, a pavement standpoint. Uh, but that's that's in the future. We have 816 miles of road, so uh, getting to the bike paths is going to take us a little bit. But it's, it's, we are aware of it, and we are working towards that. And uh, having an avid cycler, uh, the head of the department, uh, he, he, he doesn't let you forget either. So <laughs> all in good fun anyway. So thank you, Bob. Uh, next up, Bridge 80, 300 west over Cornell Ditch and Bridge 110, 600 east over Crooked Creek. Uh, and these are recommendations of a consultant design services. So what do you got? Um, the department up here, we agreed that we were going to combine these uh, two bridges into one RFP. So this will be one contract for, or agreement for design services. Bridge 80, 300 west over Cornell, it's just north of State Road 8 a little bit. Bridge 110. 
uh, 600 east over Crooked Creek, that's in between State Road 2 and US 30. So we're combining both of these bridges into um, one agreement, uh, two separate designs, and there'll be two separate construction contracts when they come out because they do have two separate uh, project numbers with NDOT. But our recommendation for the consultant services is United Consulting. Any questions or comments from Bob? Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and second for Bridge 80, uh, 300 west over Cornell Ditch and Bridge 110, 600 east over Perfect <laughs> Creek uh, to engage uh, United Consulting uh, for design services for those two bridges. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Post same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. Thank you very much. Yep. Next up, Jody Jackson. I give you a lot of credit, Jody, sitting in the back there through our whole meeting. Um, kind of an educator. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for coming. Sure. And uh, this is the 25th annual uh, event, so why don't you uh, give us the pitch? So we uh, postponed our April uh, 4th race due to COVID, and we were kind of waiting for the things to open back up, so we rescheduled it hopefully, to be held August 15th. Um, we're doing a rolling start from 7 to 9, so we're not going to have one uh, official start, so people are going to show up in increments, and we're going to let them go to kind of keep spacing. Mm. Therefore, we're going to need to have um, the roads open for or closed for about three hours, and I say closed because we still let traffic through. Um, we are working with the Police Police Department to have officers at the four big intersections, which are both on either side of Burlington and either side of Bullseye for our route. But we do cross into the county along with the city. Okay. And we did already receive city approval. So have you guys talked to the Sheriff's Department too uh, for the county? No. Yes. Okay. Good. Yeah. Yep. They're always on our agenda to Look, talk yeah. to. Okay. Mm -hmm. I figured, but I just thought I'd ask. Yep. <laughs> Okay, any uh, map routes included? Yep. Any questions of the board? It's a great event. Thank you. We're hoping, you guys it, do a good hoping job. it goes, so thank you. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to second uh, for the 25th annual ringing of in spring 5K road race uh, for the YMCA, Golf Race YMCA. Uh, route, map included. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Post, same sign. Motion carries. Guys like me can just go out there and walk it? Sure. You've got to be done by 10. Yeah. <laughs> there is a time on it. You better get it to front back there. So you might want to coordinate your ride. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Jody. All right. Uh, that's the end of our board meeting. Is there anybody here wishing to address this board? I see. Come on forward. State your name and where you're from and that microphone right there. Thank you. My name is Mary House, and I'm from Valparaiso. Currently reside in Salt Creek Commons. I've been there for 32 years, and <clears throat> excuse me, I live on a cul-de-sac that has never been paved since day one. They keep coming out, they keep putting band-aids on there. In the winter time, the plow guy comes and he takes it all back up. I've made numerous calls, gotten online. They have been there two times this week to fix the problem, but they keep putting a band-aid on it. This is not only unsightly, it's bringing the value of my home down and the seven homes around us. It's also very unsafe, and I'm really wanting something done with it. I don't know who else to go to. I was told that Mr. Boots um, takes care of this. And this was the only chance of me getting a hold of him. So, um, if you'd like, you could see these pictures. It's May, just, may we see him? Thank you. It's, the little sections there, they're actually, when you walk on them, they raise up. It's unsightly. It's unsafe. The kids play basketball out there, and when the ball goes down, gravel comes up. They jump, gravel comes up. What's your address? My address is 381 Riviera Court. We are all homeowners out there, and this is just 
It's not fixing the problem. It's just putting a Band-Aid on it. Yeah. We'll, we'll, I don't want to speak for the other two. We'll, we'll take care of this. I appreciate I think it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, nice this is one of the neighbor ladies, also a homeowner. Are you playing basketball when you fell? No. <laughs> no, riding your bike. Well, I can see where that, because all that gravel there would not be conducive to bike riding. Yeah. 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 Yeah.